five three five point zero. Seven four, this is six three. The Sierra two reports that to be a hot area. Get out as soon as you can. Over. This is seven four. We'll go. We'll go to taking cover. We're on our way now. Seven four out. This is six three. Roger. Return to Lima Zulu one four. Six three out. Uh, let me know when the fire element comes in contact with them. Over. Battery four rounds. Deflection two niner three eight. India five November. This is zero seven. Dark out for two to three and I'm short objective four. How fast can you get the tank to clear the approach range? Over. Zero seven. This is kilo four. Whiskey six eight three percent left. About one five minutes ago. There, Echo Tango Alpha. You're a spot spot. Quadrant 478. Quadrant 478. The mobility and firepower of armor, self-propelled artillery, missiles, and mechanized infantry are basic to modern warfare. So is the capability for NBC, nuclear, biological, or chemical operations. It is vital that the U.S. Army personnel be highly trained in analyzing the effects of NBC operations especially those resulting in radiological contamination. Every division tactical operations center, or comparable to a TUC, has a specially trained unit, known as the NBC element. This unit supervises, coordinates, and evaluates all intelligence received from the field on NBC operations and capabilities. It also transmits its findings to other units when appropriate. The NBC element is commanded by a captain who directs its functions under the supervision of the division chemical officer. Through this chain of command, the NBC element keeps the division commanding officer informed of all NBC actions. As chief of the NBC unit, the captain is responsible for coordinating friendly nuclear fire plans and also supervising the analysis and evaluation of fallout monitoring data. He maintains a radiological situation map disseminates contamination data, and maintains radiation status of all units. When more data is needed, he recommends a survey of areas suspected of contamination and directs the survey party's activities. He is assisted by an operations sergeant. He also trains and cross-trains enlisted personnel, such as the computer. This man or woman computes transmission factors of radiological contamination from incoming data calculates the decay rate from appropriate tables, graphs, or nomograms, and converts all data to ground dose rates at specific reference times. The plotter uses the computed data to plot contamination predictions to prepare NBC reports. A clerk typist completes the unit. This person is cross-trained to perform computer plotted duties. An NBC element has the capability for a continuous 12-hour operation. When continuous 24-hour operations are required, the element must be supplemented by one or more JA teams. The effectiveness of the NBC element in evaluating and transmitting information of nuclear operations is closely tied to the speed, accuracy, and completeness of monitoring data it receives from the field. This data may come from any unit in the field, whether there are combat elements like an infantry outpost, an artillery forward observer, a tank commander, or service elements, medics, supply personnel, or communications men. Normally, the information source is a combat unit under attack or observing an attack. The information is organized in what is called an initial NBC-1 report. This report is sent to the next higher headquarters, battalion, where all NBC reports from battalion units are consolidated to make up the battalion NBC-1 report. Battalion NBC-1 reports are then sent to brigade headquarters, which consolidates the NBC-1 reports from their subordinate units. The brigade NBC-1 reports are sent to division NBC element. 
This report is forwarded with a flash message precedence. November Zero Whiskey Niner Three. This is Juliet Seven Whiskey Two Seven. Flash. November Bravo Charlie One Nuclear. Line Bravo. Lima Bravo One Niner Six Four Zero Zero. Line Charlie. Grid Zero Six Zero Degrees. Line Delta, 201405. Line Foxtrot, Lima Bravo, 205305. Estimated. Line Golf, Artillery. Line Hotel, Surface. Over. Line Bravo indicates the location of the observer by map reference or place name. Line Charlie is the direction of the attack from the observer. It is measured counterclockwise from grid or magnetic north and is given either in degrees or mils. Line delta is the date and time of the detonation, given in either local or Zulu time. Line foxtrot gives the location of the attack, actual or estimated. Line golf indicates the means of delivery if known. Line hotel, the type of burst, air, surface, or unknown. Subsequent NBC reports take a strike serial number assigned by the NBC element and use the message precedence of immediate instead of flash. An NBC One report must always give information on the type of report, the position of the observer, and the direction of attack from him, or, instead of these two items, the location of the attack. It must also have the date and time, and the type of burst. These are must items, but the reporting source should add any other information it can obtain. For instance, flash to bang time in seconds. In case of nuclear burst, the observer immediately takes cover, closes his eyes, and counts 1,001, 1,002, and so on. flash to bang time interval, in this case six seconds, is entered on the NBC One report as line Juliet. Flash to bang time makes it easy to estimate distance from the observer to ground zero. The sound of the explosion or bang travels at an average speed of 350 meters per second. Six seconds would be 2100 meters or 2.1 kilometers from ground zero. Another valuable item of information from an observer is the cloud width of the nuclear burst measured five minutes after the time of detonation after the cloud has stabilized. This measurement is given in either degrees or mils and becomes line Lima on the NBC One report. Also very desirable is a measurement of the stabilized cloud top angle or cloud bottom angle or both. Units with organic optical equipment like binoculars and the artillery's aiming circle are highly suitable for taking these measurements. This drawing provides a visualization of cloud top and cloud bottom angles. The measurements are made approximately 10 minutes after the burst to allow time for the cloud to stabilize. They are entered on the NBC One report in degrees or mils as line Mike. If these angles cannot be measured, cloud top height and cloud bottom height in feet or meters are desirable alternate measurements. Unlike NBC-1 reports, which come in from the field observers, NBC-2 reports are composed by personnel of the NBC element. They are used to transmit to all units evaluated data on nuclear, chemical, or biological attacks, and are normally based on two or more NBC-1 reports. An NBC-2 report has the same basic data as an NBC-1 report, with the attack location pinpointed as closely as possible, and in the case of nuclear detonation, an estimated yield in kilotons. The estimated yield is calculated by the NBC element specialist from information in NBC-1 reports, such as flash to bang time or distance to ground zero. 
nuclear burst angle with measured five minute after burst, stabilized cloud top or cloud bottom angles, or cloud top or cloud bottom heights. The specialist plots these figures on nomogram charts on which various nuclear burst parameters have been correlated with yields. Bear in mind that these yield calculations are strictly field estimates. Evaluated data from the NBC2 nuclear report is entered on the radiological situation map overlay. These data also appear on an NBC3 nuclear report used for immediate warning or expected radiological contamination or hazardous area in the event of a surface nuclear burst. Specifically, an NBC3 nuclear report is a detailed fallout prediction for two zones. Zone 1 is an area of primary hazard in which exposed personnel may receive an emergency risk dose of radiation less than four hours after the arrival of fallout. Zone 2 is an area of secondary hazard in which personnel may not receive an emergency risk dose for as long as four hours after the arrival of fallout. However, this fallout prediction cannot be made without certain essential information on the nuclear burst and on the wind structure between the ground and various portions of the nuclear cloud. The NBC element specialist obtains the nuclear burst information from the NBC-1 reports. For information on wind structure, he must make a fallout wind vector plot. This will give him the lateral limits of fallout, the effective downwind direction, and the effective wind speed. A fallout wind vector plot is derived from upper air wind data and is prepared each time new data are received from division or core field artillery meteorological sections or from Air Force Air Weather Service detachments. They transmit data on wind speed and direction to 30,000 meters four times daily and to 18,000 meters eight times daily. The NBC element specialist applies these data to the fallout prediction plotting scale, the M1556UM, to determine wind vectors. The fallout wind vector plot is prepared on an overlay. The plot is drawn to any convenient map scale. Each vector line signifies a wind layer. The importance of the wind vector plot is that after it is oriented by the ground zero tick mark and the grid north, it represents a series of points on the ground where the small size fallout particles are expected to land. Preparing a fallout wind vector plot is only the first step toward preparing the fallout prediction that goes into the NBC-3 nuclear report. Next is determining the nuclear burst data for input. The specialist takes the evaluated data from the NBC-1 nuclear reports. He determines the cloud parameters and enters them on the worksheet. He then makes an initial determination of the lateral limits of the fallout prediction and then computes the effective wind speed, the downward distances of zones 1 and 2. He constructs the left and right radio lines and records their azimuths on the worksheet, then completes the fallout prediction. He completes the worksheet by recording the essential data for the NBC-3 nuclear report and then prepares an NBC-3 nuclear report. For instance, Line Yankee provides the downwind azimuths from ground zero of the left radial line and the right radial line. There are four digit numbers which must be stated either in mils or degrees. They are entered on the NBC-3 nuclear report thus providing the direction of the attack measured clockwise from grid north to the left and right radial lines. Similarly, the figures on the worksheet, the effective wind speed, the adjusted downwind distance of zone 1, and the cloud radius are added to the NBC-3 nuclear report. When the effective wind speed drops below 8 kilometers, Line Yankee is omitted as useless for a reliable fallout prediction. And on Line Zulu, 
only the three digits of the radial distances of Zone 1 are given. The data in an NBC-3 nuclear report makes it possible to quickly prepare a detailed fallout prediction plot on an overlay. When the overlay is properly oriented on an operations map, commanders at all levels can estimate the impact of the nuclear burst on the tactical situation. Because of the swift-moving tempo of modern warfare, small unit commanders may be unable to wait for the detailed fallout prediction message to be found in an NBC-3 nuclear report. A simplified fallout prediction method is provided in order to make an immediate estimate of the potential fallout area. This simplified method requires nuclear burst information, which can be obtained from the NBC-2 nuclear report. A current effective downwind message is also required. The third item required is a simplified fallout predictor. This can be field constructed or the standard area predictor, radiological fallout M5A2, which may be requisitioned through supply channels. The M5A2 provides an azimuth dial for orientation. A map scale calibrated in kilometers and several nomograms to expedite computations. The simplified prediction method gives a small unit commander the capability of quickly estimating the location of a potential fallout hazard. It's vital for all troops that may be operating in or near the area of a nuclear burst to know the extent and intensity of radiological contamination as well as the location of the fallout hazard. Contamination measurements are made in radiation dose rates. Ground dose rates are the basic reference. They are measured in the open at one meter above the ground. Radiation dose rates are commonly measured in rads per hour, the rad being a measurement of ionizing radiation that would be absorbed. Radiation can be detected and dose rates measured by instruments such as this radiac meter. Field units performing this monitoring forward their information in the form of an NBC-4 nuclear report. This report, like the NBC-1 report, is forwarded through channels to division headquarters and its NBC element. November Zero Whiskey Niner 3. November Zero Whiskey Niner 3. This is Juliet 7, Whiskey 27. Immediate. November Bravo Charlie 4. Line Quebec, Lima Bravo 1, 2, 3, Niner 8, 7. Line Romeo. 2-7, initial. Line Sierra, 2-0-1-7-1, Zulu, over. Juliet 7, Whiskey 2-7, this is November 0, Whiskey Niner 3, Roger, out. The essential new information in an NBC-4 report is the location of the reading, letter item Q. R, the dose rate in rads per hour, the words initial, increasing, peak, or decreasing may be added, and S, the date time of the reading in local or Zulu time. Letter items Q, R, and S may be repeated as often as necessary. However, monitoring reports from field units may not provide sufficient information at division for evaluating contaminated areas. In such cases, the chief of the NBC element may recommend one or more radiological survey parties. Survey parties are under the control of the NBC element whose personnel plan and direct the survey as well as screen and transmit incoming data. Radiological surveys are either aerial or ground. The control party plans the route. He plots straight line course legs between pre-selected checkpoints on an overlay used in conjunction with a map. He also provides the latest information about the contaminated area, along with an operation exposure guide that includes the turn-back dose rate at which the mission will be aborted. During the aerial survey, the monitor reads his survey meter and records the dose rate at pre-selected time intervals beginning with the initial checkpoint. 
Aerial surveys can cover larger areas than ground surveys, as well as rough terrain to which access is difficult for ground troops. However, aerial dose rate readings are not as accurate as ground survey readings. The NBC element also plans the routes for ground survey parties. Dose rate readings are taken inside the survey vehicle at predetermined distances between checkpoints along the designated route. If possible, the survey party reports its data directly to the control party by radio as the survey is being conducted. Survey data also provides the means for preparing an NBC-5 radiological contamination report by the NBC element. This is best sent as a trace or overlay if time and distance permit. Note that the contour lines of different dose rates are color-coded and that the contour lines are annotated with the dose rates with red for 1,000 rad per hour, green for 300 rad per hour, blue for 100 rad per hour, and black for 20 rad per hour. However, very often, in a fast-moving tactical situation, there may not be time to send the NBC-5 report as an overlay or trace. In that case, it is transmitted in its regular format. Note that when contamination results from a single nuclear burst, the dose rate always refers to H plus one hour, and the letter T is used. When there has been several nuclear detonations at different times or on different days and no single H plus one hour is possible, dose rates are reported at a specified time using letter item O. Letter items O and T are therefore alternates. Both cannot be used in the same report. The NBC element is an indispensable component of a division or core-sized fighting force. In a battlefield environment of nuclear warfare, the efficiency of the NBC element is vital to survival. 